Come on, it's out of box. Come on, it's out of box. Okay, YouTube. At the end of this episode, we have a special guest doing an interview with Sir Classic. You know what I mean? Uh, you're gonna want to hear it. We got him on the phone. He's gonna talk about his initiative to feed the homeless, helping young children out here. You got to listen. Please stay tuned. YouTube, you made it. Hello. Cheers. <clears throat> My name is Bruce Lively, and I'm D Boy Slim, and welcome to the basement. The Basement is the first daily hip-hop debate show. We take one topic a week and debate a different question about that topic every day. This week's topic is debating the eras in hip-hop. The era in hip-hop. The early years, the golden era, early 2000s, and the millennial age. Now some of these overlap, and that's all right, that's okay. That's what debate is about. That's, that's where the debate comes in. So it's simple, it's easy. With that being said, Lego. Yeah, yeah, that's easy for me. We'll make this short and sweet. The '90s, no question, is is called the golden era. It's documented. That was the golden era. I think you had. That's when hip hop at a, as a culture and rap was at its pinnacle, at its peak. <clears throat> I don't think it would probably ever get that, that, that excellent in quality again. You know, just, you know, names off the top of the head that come to Whoa, mind, like wait. Snoop Dogg, Nas's and Jay are legends and icons. You know, that, that's, that, that could never be duplicated again. Duplicated is one thing. I mean, uh, but get that good again is kind of a a lofty statement. Like it, it, in the next hundred years, hip hop will never be as good as it was in the nineties again. Like that's 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 a bit much. It's a bit much. It is the golden era. Uh, unfortunately, it's only a forty year old art form. So you know, there, there's a lot more to be seen. But I don't think we're talking about. Uh, what's better or what's worse the question really is the social and cultural impact and you see the influence is what drives the impact in my mind and with this new thing called the internet the impact and the and the, the influence that hip-hop has now on on the culture and the society is just bigger and I think it's where we wanted it to be when we was young Trying to trying to get hip hop from being a, a underground sport to to being pop, it was pop. We, we've felt the negative and positive effects of that. I mean, Kendrick Lamar at the Grammy Awards, uh, unable to be done in the '90s, but because of where we are, the impact is bigger. Macklemore and the whole gay issue—you couldn't talk about that stuff in hip hop before, but it's it's widespread, whether you like it or not. And Wiz Khalifa and many like him with the multicultural platform. There was nothing like that in the 90s. Let me tell you one thing you said right. And that's, in any generation, in any genre of music, what defines something to be classic is if it stands the test of time. What we do know about those rappers that I mentioned from the 90s era, who are now considered icons, legends, tycoons, and moguls, when you speak about Snoop Dogg. And let's touch on Snoop Dogg, though, the mogul. When you talk about cultural impact, the guy has a show right now with Martha Stewart. If that's not... Isn't that a millennial show? If that's not... He's from the 90s. 
That's my point. And when well, I see, say the, it's an unfair argument. You ahead. had your time. Hold okay. on a second. Okay. What I'm saying is, the guy came from the '90s and he's still relevant in the millennium. It will be. Yeah, it's yet to be seen in the next 20 years will you still see some of the rappers that are currently rapping now in the ne in in 20 years from now. In, in that in that case, uh everybody who's still around from back then is something that we glad can't you said that. everybody who's still around from back then, we glad still we you can't said we that. can't argue that. Glad you said that. But I have a argument. Couple, I have a few more than a few millennial rappers that have come out, come and gone. There's, Jay there's Money. many that juice me. Drama, Miracle, Young LA, Gorilla Zo, PD Pablo, Trinidad James. These are all names that were hot one second and the next minute they were not. So you don't have none of those names for the 90s? Who? You name me some now. Now, let me give you names from the 90s who are still currently making music today who's still relevant. And this is why I say the quality in music that was being made in the talking, 90s okay, so and classic will never be made again and it was the best and it was at its peak in the 90s. Let me give you a few names. Common Sense. Fat Joe is still currently making music and on the charts. Snoop Dogg still makes music. Jada Kiss. Buster. Birdman. E-40. Fabulous. Cameron How is can still I possibly music. tell you that Kendrick is making music 20 years from now? How can I possibly tell you Wiz Khalifa is making music 20 years from now? Your argument is is the cultural impact of millennials versus the 90s. So when these people crossed over to the millennium, they're making millennial music. They're making millennial music. We talk about the 90s, talk about Yo! MTV raps. You're talking about the cultural impact. It was impossible for them to have the same cultural impact in the 90s. Let me give you another, let me give you a reason why. Let's look at the highest rating. Let's look at the Nielsen ratings. It's just your MTV Rats, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. 7.8, one of the highest that was out. We was happy to see Yo MTV Raps get above 2.0 in the Nielsen ratings because it was just about us. I don't, I don't deny that the cultural, the hip hop culture impact is great in the 90s because it was the beginning. It was the it was in the middle, but the beginning. But culturally and socially around the world, you could have never have had the impact that you have now because the technology wasn't even there. This era has been the one to push it further. This era has been the one to make it pop, which is what we was hoping for in the 90s. I hear your argument again. Biggie and Tupac are still two of the biggest names ever in hip hop. And they had no millennium tools. They died. They died. They died. Back then. And they still. Kids still know who Tupac and Biggie Smalls are. So again, the 90s. Back then, it was, you can, you can say the biggest names, but I can tell you that the cultural impact and the, the popularity of hip hop has made it to the point in the millennium where a 21 Savage can actually say what he has to say from the streets without the money that you had to have to be able to get there. I bet you there's not a lot of people who know who third base was in the 90s. Their cultural impact didn't make a difference. You can say Biggie, you can say Nas and Jay-Z, but third base, nobody knew you had to be ahead. Nah, you're bugging. You, 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 your facts are mixed up. Get Run the DMC the... in the 80s were doing Aerosmith joints with, with, with Rock yeah, and Yeah, and, and you know what? And they you know went multi-platinum. And you know Houdini what? Houdini went multi-platinum. What are you talking no, about? When when Run DMC did the joint with Aerosmith, it was actually seen as a, a big divide in hip hop. There were a lot of people going, we don't like that. We don't want that. Because it hadn't Ooh, even been. Maybe in your neighborhood. I've seen it. People, it, it on did exactly on what it had intended to do. Unify the two genres is what it was intended on doing. If you've seen the video, it ended, where it was bringing down nah, the I understand on the other it. side I of understand the wall, it. it did exactly. They were trying and to break down that, that young wall. Age, I'm at about eight, maybe seven, eight, nine I years old the video. at that point. And I, and I knew what it was about. Rock and roll meeting hip hop. When That's Run wrong. DMC did it, it was still seen as taboo. It was still seen as something that was not being done. 
It was still seen as something that you couldn't do, and the fact that they did it made it taboo, and there's people against it and for it. Right now, the social and cultural impact of the guy down the street, or the dude on the skateboard, or the Rarys, or the 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 person with the like tattoos, said, or the people wearing dresses, or the gay people, in the 90s, or the people was who, just at who an listen to rock high. music is not it. weird anymore. At the or, 90s, it was at an all-time No, it's high. at an all-time high it now. The first time because it wasn't you weren't done, even allowed to do those things. The first time that it wasn't done, it wasn't in the 90s. But it was at an all-time high in the 90s. It wasn't. It was, it was just beginning in the 90s. No, right the now, 80s is I just, when it was I'm, just beginning. I just pointed no, out how the beginning Aero of the social was and a, cultural impact worldwide, nationwide, not even the Run world. DMC was the first multi-platinum selling group. What are you talking about? Their music been crossed over before the 90s. They had movies. What are you talking about? Russell Simmons was big. What do you mean? Okay. What do you mean? Run okay. DMC? Okay. After Run DMC? LL Cool J. What are you talking about? Now, now when I tell you, you cross no, over? No, when I are tell you, kidding me? when I tell you, are you kidding me? When I tell you, cross the over. cultural impact of those. You saying two. LL didn't cross over before the nineties? Uh, you so. But what I'm saying think is, but what I'm saying is, in the millennium. You could not have done certain things. It was for hip hop culture. It was for hip hop culture. They broke those barriers in the eighties and the nineties that you're talking they about. They never that broke allowed, the gay barriers. That allowed they never Yachty broke the skateboarding and, and, and barriers. People to come in. They, like they, they did. When when they did the rock music, it was still seen as weird and unconventional. Right now, the the same dude. They never had a gin. They never had the Chinese barrier. They didn't have that. They didn't have your your. Uh, the, the rappers coming all the way from Europe, your Ronnie Sides and your other people, they couldn't have a little dicky back then. If you were white and rapping, you had to sound like third base. If you 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 sound did those, like if, third you, base, if you did those the other Beastie things, the Beastie Boys would be offended to that. They the, did the their Beastie own Boys, thing. The Beastie Boys started. Back the Beast, the first the Beastie boy to Boys rap? started as as a punk rock band. The Beastie Boys started as a punk rock band. That rap that was from Brooklyn. What are you talking about? That also rapped and they would they lived in Brooklyn. My friend, the Beastie Boys started as a punk rock. Get out of here, man! As a punk rock. Macklemore ain't the first one to rap. MC I Search say was the discovered first one Nas. While you fronting on the the uh, third base, MC Search it, discovered Nas. It, that I have I have no problem with that. What I'm saying is. The cultural impact that they had, because nobody What's could know the about them. Impact they, than that? Nobody knew about them. The, the, the MC only hip hop culture was too influenced. many MCs have more of a cultural impact than that. Hip hop influence is different from cultural and social influence nationwide. They don't. They did not have just the technology alone or the people that were willing to listen to it and take it seriously. You talking about Kendrick on the BET Awards? You're not talking about Kendrick at the Grammys? You're talking about BET, Black Entertainment. My friend. Knock it off. My friend, thanks to social media and thanks to the internet, that was worldwide. It's no longer just that. You couldn't push a what rap. was worldwide? The, the, that, performance, that performance was worldwide. Everybody's seen it. Everybody on every level has seen that. Because of the influence that the technology can bring. I'm not going to argue with you that technology has advanced. Like I said, the impact. You talk, you, what you're talking about is the impact of technology. What I'm talking about is the impact of the music. Let's get back to the music. Okay, you're the talking impact, about the impact of the, the impact technology. Of the, of the music the and the musicians. This is different. It's it's, it's it's to the point where, like I said, we're how talking, the technology okay, influenced the music. Okay, fine. So so so, I'm, I'm also talking about, about the music. music. I'm also talking about the technology. I'm also talking about how the music and the musicians. Don't be the, fool, people out there. Listen, the music and the musicians. And in a good and a like good to use big and words a bad side and, and, and talk in circles. On if you. any word I use is big to you, that's your fault. The social and cultural impact now, unfortunately, because hip hop has been bought and paid for by high-priced designers, has the same kids 
forgetting the black clothing that used to be hip hop culture and now the same thing that Jennifer Aniston wears has to be in the video because the cultural impact of, of hip hop is pop now, it's popular, it's big, it's worldwide. It wasn't just for us like it was, it isn't just for us like it was then. And we wanted it to get that way. We wanted it to get that way because we wanted it to have more of a social and cultural impact. Unfortunately, the companies have bought it out, the oligarchs have bought it out, and, and we're getting what they want. But you can believe, you can best believe that they set the standard for what's being worn, what's being driven, how you speak and how you don't speak, all the way from Hollywood to Brooklyn. What artists? From what artists? From what artists? Right. I, I gave it to you. Okay, fine. Let me give you some you more. You said Macklemore because he speaks on the gay issue. Wiz Khalifa, Kendrick Lamar, even all the way down to Gucci Mane, T.I. What about... Hold on. Hold on. Hey, man. So we saying Gucci Mane. His name is Gucci Mane. Because it's more impactful than a common. Unfortunately, in the millennial age... I'm out of here. In a millennial age, yes, he was. You know you make no sense. No. <laughs> no. You're wrong. You're you wrong. know you make because, no because, sense. Because Common is happens to be a rapper that I enjoy the most, and he's up there on my top ten list, hip-hop culture is different from the culture that was How available. You say impact and culture, culture and impact. That's, social, the, that's the question. And impact and social. You can say those words 50 times till you're blue in the face. There's nothing more impactful about Gucci's music Come out to the box, boy. than Common, Nas, Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Snoop, Lil Wayne. Started rapping in the 90s with the Hot Boys and Cash Money. My friend, he's a millennial rapper. He's a millennial rapper. Cut it out. He's, he's a millennial a rapper. rapper. He's been a rapper. Stop it. You're going to tell me Lil Wayne is not a millennial rapper. Say that. Let me hear you say that. He been around since the 90s. Oh, ah, exactly. Lil Wayne is a millennial. Cash Money and Hot Boys been around since the 90s. Lil That's Wayne is not a millennial rapper. That's a fact. The person who does the intro to Undisputed for, for Skip and Shannon because it's allowed now because the cultural impact of hip hop is bigger now. Wale, who does the, the, the intro for First Take, which is allowed now because the cultural if, uh, impact of hip-hop is bigger now. What about now. Wale? What about Black Thoughts and The Roots? The Roots. You know Questlove? You remember him? I love Questlove. Yeah, I know. You see that? This guy's pulling your leg over here. You want to talk about cultural impact and all this fancy stuff? Listen, not fancy. Listen, it's not fancy. Man. Listen. It's the just roots a who play with real instruments. You see the instruments behind us? With real instruments, the guy, the, the roots. Who was more impactful than that? Impact. What do y'all think? I said all I have to say. He said all he has to say. That's a good one. That's a good one. I need to see y'all comments on that. I know we both make good points, and I think we pretty much can't go any deeper than that. You hear, you're hearing it first on the basement. Wow, that was a good one. It's been a while since I've seen something like that. Let us know what you think. Anything else? It's tomorrow. Tomorrow's question. Violence in today's music. Is art imitating life or vice versa? No, you gotta tune in. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I'll tell you what. Any shout outs? Yes. Yes. Two new two new shout outs. High caliber YT. It's all one word. But I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. High caliber YT. Said he's rocking with J. Cole. Yet another one mm. on the uh Drake versus Cole. Y'all seem to like that a lot. We're gonna get some more for you. Actually, be advised, we got another one coming on Friday. It's another versus. And we'll let y'all know. Uh, and it's gonna be an era. It's gonna be about the era, just like the all week. Um Chubby Chuckle, all one word again. He said, no way in hell Drake is better than Cole. Mm -hmm. See, I like that. Strong words for a strong mind. I like that.
Funny guy, Chubby Chuckle. Uh, Chubby Chuckle. I like him. I like him. We love all of y'all. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. Appreciate the support. We told you in the beginning that there would be a special guest tonight. It's going a little bit late and it's going a little bit long, but Sir Classic. We had a phone call interview with Sir Classic and his movement in Atlanta, which is Am I My Brother's Keeper? He's empowering the kids. He's uh, feeding the homeless. And we want you to know how you can be involved, okay? Stay tuned. That interview is coming right now. We all this. Peace. Okay, everybody. Today, we have a special guest on the phone with us. Atlanta DJ, producer, and engineer, Sir Classic. What's up, everybody that tuned in to the basement? This week's basement, I guess we're gonna have a good, good, good show. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I appreciate you guys, Mr. Slam and Bruce Lively, for having me on. Always, man. Always. We we actually feel blessed to to have this conversation with you, man. Um, it's extremely imperative today that that we talk to you because you know the the conversation of the day is the '90s hip hop versus uh, the millennial hip-hop, the cultural and social influences and the impact. Um, I know you have a lot to say about that, but even before we get into that, okay. tell us what the new initiative uh, the new initiative is. Am I My Brother's Keeper? What's that about? Well, the not, Am I My Brother's Keeper is something that um, it's a non-profit organization um, and it's actually just an aid to the community. Uh, some of the focal points there's two main things that's dear to my heart um, with that I'm and my, my brother's keeper is dealing with some of the epidemics that, that's going on in our community one is homelessness and the other one is dealing with the youth meaning the kids that's like okay. what you might consider the millennials and the young kids um, that's what our target focus is right there it's like dealing with the kids like a lot of the, the stuff that the kids deal with is peer pressure, like looking at what their friends and what they're doing. If it's negative, they follow. If it's positive, they follow. And being that we in the time now that a lot of things is more negative, a lot of kids is influenced. So, and my brother's keeper, that's where we come in to aid and, and show with different programs that we put together. Right now, we have the Feed the Homeless coming up on Christmas Day. So, at this point, that's what we're gearing up for. And, um, you know, we, you know, just doing it for the community but that's really what it is it's just um just being able to be a helping hand to some of the, the, the like the problems that we have in our communities where where are you gonna be on christmas day where where can people find you what, what's the layout how do we how do people get in uh, touch well on christmas uh we are going to be at saint mark's baptist church that's off of Donald Lee Howell. um Donald Lee Howard, for those that's been in Atlanta for a long time, used to be Bank 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 Highway for the newcomers. It's Donald Lee Howell. Facts. Way. It's a church. And um, one of my um, event coordinators that's helping, because we have a bunch of volunteers, and thanks to you guys, Bruce Lively, um, if everybody come together to help out, that's where we're going to be. With, uh, the goal is to serve over 100 plus homeless people. Uh, if it goes over, that's going to be a blessing. I'm nothing but a tool from God doing what you know I feel like needs to be done. That's it's a good look. Than just feeding the homeless is way bigger, but it's a start. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, and I think you're in yeah. the right place, brother. I think you're in the right place. <laughs> that was, yeah, that's funny. Y'all, that's what I need to hear right about. Man. <laughs> well, listen, listen. Be, be. Okay. I. I also want to tap into your your knowledge as a musician as a as a student as you said and as an executive we're talking about 90s hip-hop versus millennial hip-hop the cultural and social impact uh maybe which one has more or maybe you have something else to say about that uh what do you have to say on that conversation well i would say like this just recently, I came, I, you know, I go back in my time and I want to listen to Old Tribe. I was listening to Smoke Vibes and stuff. One of my favorite albums, Low End Theory. Mm. I remember when Q-Tip and, 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 and uh, Buster, you know, I'm talking about Buster from Leaders of the New School. Uh, was it, uh, let me see. Buster with the Dreads. Buster, the whole Native tongue. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When it was doing that, it was more social. That was back mm. when uh, mm. people were the, the the artists and just people that was fans of hip hop 
had a, 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 a social conscience. You on point. That's today's time. Uh, uh, Black Sheep. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me see. Let me, let me, let me, am I missing anything? You talking early 90s uh, right now. Love, all right. All right. I mean, music had, had more consciousness and it had more of a direction. Even though you had even NWA, Easy E, all them talking. You was talking about that earlier. Uh, Mm-hmm. They were actually talking more about conscience. See, when you listen to older rappers like that, we'll consider gangster rappers, mm-hmm. like Scarface, when they rapped about it, they didn't glorify. They told you this is what happened, but they told you the end game, like you're going to be dead or in jail. See, now it's, it's, just, it's changed. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So back then, it was a little different mm-hmm. consciously than what, what I see now. You see what I'm saying? And so it's all the saying of. We have to start knowing ourselves. Once a person knows themselves, then that means they become individuals and followers. You see what I'm saying? So that's what, why this whole conscience, when you talk about now and then, people are following. If one person comes on with a record that sounds a certain way, everybody else feel like, I need to make a record just like that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's talking about, and, and that's where it, it's wrong. We, we spoke about that in another interview. Matter of fact, in, in another show, we just spoke about that. Listen, you're a powerful, powerful, powerful brother, man. Powerful words, and we're so glad to have you here, man. Uh, hold on one second. Slip. It's passion. It's passion. It's passion. I appreciate it. passion. And we could tell you. have anything left to say? You look like you was wanting to say something. Nah, I was just going to touch on what you were saying. Me and Bruce were sitting here talking about the same thing earlier. He was touching on the fashion end of it. And saying okay. how these kids are out of hand and following trends with, it, it's not just urban fashion anymore. They breaking their neck to have the high end fashion or just glorifying names you can't even pronounce anymore. Giuseppe and 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 and, and, and Mason Margiela. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. So and how that end of it has gotten out of hand? They've infiltrated, man. They've infiltrated. Uh. It, that's definitely a, a, a deal in hip hop, and uh, it, it coincides with what you were saying. And kids following trend, just trying to be cool because it's yeah. cool. <laughs> I, I think the idea is do what is yourself, not because hip hop told you to, or this rapper told you to, or because they're infiltrating us that way. If we're if you could teach the kids to be themselves and to love themselves and to understand who they are from young, you'll get a better result when they grow older. Man, I like it. I like it, sir. Classic. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna wrap it up, man. Uh, any final words? And also, make sure you let the people know where to find you at. Man, you can find me by going to surclassic.com or just sitting in the World Wide Web. Just type in surclassic, and, and, and the rest is right there. And so, everybody that's tuned in and listening and viewing, I appreciate um, your guys' support. I hope. For those that want, that's not doing nothing on the day of Christmas, if y'all want to come out, um, you can um, go, look us up. Um, with I am so classic, and my my brother's keeper on all, all social media. Um, that's what I said. That's in my heart, and that's what we are pushing for. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate all it, brother. Right. Have a good one, man. Thank you. All right, you too. Guys. Take care. Easy.